Okay, so here we go, the playoff video. This is going to be an update on two things. We're going to talk about the Stanley Cup playoffs, and secondly, I wanted to talk about me. Because it's no secret that so far throughout the playoffs, we haven't really been making too many videos about what's been going on. We kind of stopped up with the updates, and we haven't been doing any streams. This isn't really new, because last year we did do a similar format to this year, where we only did streams for the draft lottery, the finals, and then the draft itself, and that was sort of supposed to be the plan heading into this year, because I kind of stopped having the availability as a human being to do streams every once in a while. For the playoffs, we couldn't really do streams every day, because as we had said, the world's different now than it was in 2020 and 2021. There's things to do. It's almost summer here in Vancouver. It's warm, it's beautiful, it's lovely, and I am spending my time outside. It's been great. And honestly, for me personally, I've gone through just a lot of sort of personal growth and development the past little while. I think y'all remember just a few months ago, I kind of went through a really bad and negative experience romantically. And so that was kind of on my psyche a lot for the past little while. I'm not gonna lie, it has been very tough to get over that. But we have been making progress. And part of that progress comes with freeing myself, freeing my mind, and just taking some nice little walks, going downtown, going to English Bay, seeing what Vancouver has to offer, seeing the park, seeing the beach volleyball going on, participating in that, doing activities, playing sports, going outside, because that's an option now. And it was always an interesting transition to note, because last year, we didn't really do too many streams, and I know a lot of y'all said, hey, where are the streams? Where are the streams for the playoffs, like you did in 2021, and in 2020? And, you know... I'm starting to reevaluate what I feel towards doing the streaming thing, especially for this year and the finals, mostly because, firstly, I'm in a position in my life where I really don't know if I have the availability to consistently stick to a schedule as I had done the past few years, mostly because the world is opening up, because I'm doing more things, because I'm exploring myself and the world more than before but also because the teams involved may not be the teams that would give me the most views. I am sorry to anybody who doesn't want to hear that, who's going to think that I'm a money, grubby, hungry YouTuber, because that's kind of what I'm supposed to be in this market. You know, this is my full-time job. I have to think about preserving my profession and my time, using it proficiently. But last time we did the streams full-time, the Habs went to the finals, and that was huge. A good chunk of my fan base is Montreal-based, so a whole bunch of y'all tuned into the streams. Montreal engagement is extremely profitable here on YouTube, and that was a very big reason as to why the streams in 2021 did so well. In 2022, it was sort of the end of COVID and we were sort of exiting lockdowns. Sure, there were opportunities to go outside, but I kind of said, all right, because it was a thing, because we did this, because Nathan McKinnon has a chance to win the cup and because Tampa is there for the third time in a row, there are storylines there. We can do streams, we could build our audience, entertain the people, or at least try to, and give up four to five hours every two days to do that. And that's sort of what a lot of people don't really grasp about it as well, that streaming does take a while, like four to five hours per day every few days. It was easier back in 2021, as I said, because I wasn't going outside. Nobody was. So 2020, 2021, we could do four or five hour streams every day and it would be okay. But now things are kind of different and it's gotten to a point where I don't know if I can guarantee doing streams for this year's finals, especially if it's going to be Florida, Vegas, not because these teams don't have any fans, but because just historically speaking, this YouTube channel doesn't really thrive off of Florida Panthers content, nor does it really thrive off of Vegas content. People like to clown on Vegas. I like to clown on Vegas, and I don't like that these teams were the ones to make it. If it was like Edmonton-Boston, for example, the finals matchup that I had predicted, that would have been a crazy money-making type of series. But I think the Vegas fans don't really like me. I don't think the Florida Panthers fans have the same impact as fans like Colorado or Montreal which would result in a profitable business decision for me to invest the time and energy I would have to into doing streams, so I don't know if I can really guarantee a schedule. I'm sorry to say that, but that's sort of what I'm really just subconsciously feeling right now, so I wanted to be transparent, give out the update to y'all, and also talk a little bit about the playoffs too, because I have been watching the games, they've always been on on my TV in the background when I'm doing other things, but... I don't know, just watching these games, seeing the results, it's sort of crazy to note how each of the conference finals matchups in both the NHL and the NBA are looking like they could all be sweeps. 
Yesterday, we had Vegas-Dallas absolute stomping by the Golden Knights. They're up 3-0 on the Stars. Big revenge for 2020. And you have yourselves the matchup we're going to be talking about in this video. I know it took us five minutes to get there. I apologize for that. Florida versus Carolina. The Panthers have a 3-0 series lead, and Sergei Bobrovsky has stopped 110 of his past 111 shots. Oh my goodness, this guy is amazing. And I didn't really think that this was ever going to be a possibility, like, ever. I don't know anybody who would thought that Sergei Bobrovsky would be getting his payday in advance. We all knew he signed that huge contract back at the beginning of the decade. That takes him till 2026. It's $10 million a year. It's huge. He's 34 years old right now, too, so the contract takes him till he's 37. And everybody said right away, oh, Bob, come on, Bob, this guy, look at the 906 save percentage, the 913 save percentage, even this season, a 901 save percentage, he's not worth the money. He got his payday and he stopped being good. What happened here? But now, 2023 playoffs, 13 games played, 215 goals against, 935 save percentage. He's got one shutout, which was the game previously, game three, one nothing against Carolina, He's 10-2-0, and he's stopped all these shots, 110 of his last 111 shots faced. Here's a stat from Prashant Iyer. Sergei Bobrovsky has stopped 67 consecutive shots, tied for the 15-longest save streak by a goalie in the playoffs since 07-08. Tied for first in that span are Hellebuck in 2018 and Demko in 2020. Bubble Demko, by the way, with 98 consecutive saves. Sergei Bobrovsky is an absolute beast right now. And if you go over to Money Puck and their goaltending leaders for the playoffs, you could see that Bobrovsky, in 13 games played, has a goal saved above expected number of 19.5. This guy's gone out there and saved 19.5 shots that were so good that the computer analytical model that analyzes all the shooting opportunities, etc., thinks they should have been goals. Goals saved above expected per 60 minutes. Sergei Bobrovsky saves about 1.4 goals that should have been goals every single game. The team is clearing out shots, too. He's got a 966 save percentage on unblocked shots, and he's got an expected save percentage of a 945 on unblocked shots as well. His expected goals against average is 3.55, so if you take a look at the quality of chances that the Panthers are letting other teams have on Bobrovsky, he should be at a 3.55 goals against, but he's at a 2.15. This dude is saving so many pucks, and it's incredible to watch because this is the reason some goalies make 10 plus million dollars a year. Bobrovsky is right there. He proved everybody wrong in this postseason run, and it all started with Game 7 against Boston. Okay, Game 6 against Boston, and then Game 7 against Boston. We had talked about this earlier on in the postseason. But remember when the Tampa Bay Lightning were the top team in the NHL's history, or they tied the record for most wins in a season, only to get swept by the Blue Jackets in the first round? Who was the goalie for Columbus at that time? Oh yeah, it was Bobrovsky. This time around, the biggest choke ever by any team that was in the NHL's regular season into the playoffs. The best team, bar none, NHL regular season hockey has ever seen. They lose after having a 3-1 to lead against the Florida Panthers. They choke it away. They lose in Game 7, and Sergei Bobrovsky is there once again. I don't know what it is about this dude, but he's gone out there in the clutchest moments possible and just showed off why he is a $10 million AAV goalie today. Now, maybe this video goes out there and completely ruins the mojo. Maybe after beating Boston, after beating Toronto, after going up 3-0 against the Carolina Hurricanes, this is the video that is going to jinx everything and give the hockey gods the signal to make Bobrovsky let in five goals on 13 shots this next coming Game 4. Maybe. But based off of how he's played, I mean, the guy has stopped 60-something consecutive shots. Do you really think any sort of a fallout is expected at this point? I mean, right now, the expected goals against shouldn't be expected anymore based off of how good he's been playing, and the Carolina Hurricanes are having a really difficult time getting by. For Sergei Bobrovsky, this dude is showing off that he is still at the top of his game at 34 years old, and I am really, really here for it. Everybody's been saying the Panthers are kind of like the Canadians from 2021. Eh, we'll see. 
We'll see what happens when they make the finals. But for now, you can let me know your thoughts in the comment section below about Florida versus Carolina. Also, the Florida Panthers versus the Maple Leafs and the Bruins and Sergei Bobrovsky, the crazy numbers he's been putting up. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below about how godly he has been playing. I hope you enjoyed this. Vrishaj, Rolls 99. And bye.